This podcast is a proud member of the UUOP Network. This is episode 593 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast for January 9th, 2024. Hey everyone, welcome to the show, the first one that has been, so let me get this right, it's the first one that's been recorded and put out this year, because the one that's out next week was recorded two days ago, so technically it's not the first recorded, but it's the first one released this year that we've recorded this year, if that makes sense. Of course, joining me is Tracy. Hello! And Chris. I can't believe we haven't recorded since last year. <laughs> <laughs> and Michelle. I am, of course, your host, Lee, uh, but also joining us is Killer Roebuck's favourite <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I swore I wasn't going to do it, but I can't oh, resist girl. it. I've got to work with her. <laughs> the head of the Seth Kaberski fan club, Kayla. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Seth Kaberski. Hey, sir. Hey, happy new year. Happy to new all year. Of you. Thank happy you year, so man. much for having me on. <sighs> uh, I'm so used to just sending in my, my little things yes. and having no actual contact <laughs> With y'all, so it's great to actually talk to you. It is. There's a lot to talk about, actually. When Initially, when I started looking at this, I was like, oh, there's not that much going on this year, but there kind of is, really. Um, we before- could just go down the list of little things that I've been collecting <laughs> since my last little things, and a lot of them yes. are pretty big things. Yeah. This is a full episode of Lottle Things. Yes, for yeah. definite. Yeah, it's, it's, we need to change the name of your of your <laughs> yeah. skit because it's not little. It's no. never little. Sometimes half the show is just talking about the little <laughs> it things. It is. Yes. <laughs> it is for definite. Before we get All into right. this year, though, I do want to plug there, as we've kind of mentioned, Kayla, mm-hmm. Tracy's co-host, Kayla, um, along oh, with yes. our good friend Kelly and Madeline and Shelby, the first episode of the Taste of Universal podcast, our new addition to the UUOP network, dropped yesterday, if you're listening to this on day of release. Yay! So please go and listen, subscribe, give them a rating, give them a review, and yeah, just tell your friends about it. With, with, yes. it obviously, it's yes, in please. its super infancy. Um, we're trying to get it off the ground, and, and the first episode was just a kind of get to know your hosts. Go and check it out. It is everywhere you will find UUOP, apart from YouTube, because mm-hmm. the platform that we're using to host it doesn't put out to YouTube. Um, but yeah, so Seth, 2023, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of things disappeared over the last week or so. Oh, yeah. 2024. Um, 2024, yes. sorry. Yes, right. I was, yes, right. was, was going to say, are we, did I drop in wow. a time warp? I do not want to do 2023 over again. When I don't did either. I open up? No. No, thank you. Sorry, 2024. <laughs> yes, we're in 2024 <laughs> and beyond. And uh, it it was like they flipped a switch on the new year and drained the budget out of Universal Orlando. I mean, the, the good news is that um, they are saving some money that is getting invested into Epic Universe and hopefully will pay off in 2025. But, uh, you know, there are some things on the horizon for universal but this is going to look to be a lean year especially from now until the spring break period kicks off uh this is definitely going to be a budget cutting uh time for universal orlando right now and uh folks in the folks in the entertainment department are the ones who are really uh feeling the pinch it's quite interesting as well considering how many conversations we had at the end of last year Uh of how expensive universal Mm -hmm. orlando has become over the last six months you know, uh, we, I've traditionally, you know, when preparing my books, I've always been able to say that, that a, vacation, a vacation at Universal uh, costs uh, noticeably less than an equivalent Disney vacation. Mm-hmm. And Universal, with increases in ticket prices and especially food, yes, uh, I think they have passed uh, Disney, um, you know, a longer Universal vacation. You're staying like five days or longer um then universal uh has discounts that kick in that are usually better than a long stay at disney 
But if we're just talking like, you know, two or three days, it, it, it's Universal is starting to price themselves at they're pricing themselves out of my market. I agree. If I, wasn't, yeah. uh, if I wasn't doing this professionally. I uh, would not be able to uh, spend money at Universal just for fun uh, yeah. <laughs> the way I used to. Tracy and I Definitely. noticed how much more expensive the restaurants were. I don't, yeah. I don't want to yeah. be negative this year because no, no. apparently we've been very <laughs> negative recently. Yeah, I do want to try truthful. and lift things up. But we Come no- to the dark side. <laughs> yeah. But we noticed on an, on our trip in September how much more mm-hmm. expensive food was at the parks. Yes. Money just not yep. goes far anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, someone should chart the price of butter beer versus inflation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're not wrong. It, it's insane. Uh, yeah. Um, but you know, that, that money right now, uh, that is coming out of higher ticket prices and, uh, food prices is not necessarily showing up in the guest experience. Cause we are seeing a lot of cutbacks, uh, big and small right now uh from this pretty much from the second you enter the park uh and go to pick up your park map which no longer exists uh there (laughs) there's there's cutbacks see that doesn't surprise me because i we had a lot of conversations a long time coming yes Mm -hmm. uh, covid we believed we believed covid was going to be the end of a lot of things like that i'm surprised that they even brought them back and uh, let's let's be honest. I don't I don't think any anyone has scientifically proven that anyone got COVID off of a park map. No. So uh, <laughs> I, it's it's a it's a cost cutting measure. We can spin it as an environmentally friendly yeah. measure, yes. but ultimately it's a cost cutting measure. Um, and I know that most people like myself have the app. Um, yeah. You know, have mm-hmm. can look up that that map or whatever information we need with our smartphones. But believe it or not, there are people who do not want to stare at a smartphone while they're in a park. And there are people who come from foreign countries Mm -hmm. where they're not easily able to swap in a SIM or hook up to the Wi-Fi for whatever reason. Because it's terrible. Mm. The Wi-Fi is terrible. If if nothing else else for disability access, like when you want to, you know... when you go to guest services and, uh, you know, you want them to be able to pull out a map and draw on it and show X marks the spot yeah. if you're trying to give direction to someone. Uh, there are things that a paper map is still good for that you can't. I, I wish they would still print them and, you know, keep them behind the counter or whatever. Just yeah. make them by request only, you know, fine. You don't want them get, tons of them getting thrown away every day. Fine. But I think that they should still be held somewhere. Uh, as far as I know, the, there, there's nowhere to get them anymore, though. Right, right. So there's been a big discussion about this in the travel agent world. Um, yeah. So we, perk, perk, for booking with a travel agent, we do mm. have um, the digital hey. copies of the maps. Uh-huh. So we are able. <laughs> so we are able to uh, send those to our clients before, so that they can print them on their own um, before they go, and they can have their own copy. Of course, there were there was a big discussion in, like I said, amongst travel agents with our universal reps Mm -hmm. complaining for the same thing that you just said, that people some people just want to be able to go to guest services and grab one for whatever Mm -hmm. reason. And the consensus is that if you go to guest services, if you really insist and there's really a need for it, that they supposedly they will print one one of the pdfs for you they'll they'll print one out so you'll get a blurry uh (laughs) well the (laughs) ones that no the ones that we have are not blurry they're they're actually pretty nice okay um but they're definitely not as nice as the you know glossy glossy right but you know to be honest i mean i haven't used one in a decade probably but i even walking around the parks i really don't see a lot of people with a physical map anymore No, it's it's true, but um, I I gotta say, just I have a soft spot for ephemera. Um, uh-huh. I love yes. to look yeah. through my folders from yes. the eighties and the nineties of brochures and park maps and tickets and and stuff. And it, you know, it's if nothing else, it's a free souvenir. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's and there's exactly, fewer and fewer yeah. free souvenirs around. Yeah, that's that's true. the that's man a... who has park ticket zero yes. zero zero. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. But it's right. I can guarantee no. you now, ninety percent of people listening to this podcast will only get a park map as a souvenir. Well, we get them. We yeah. we don't open and, them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, Seth. I yeah. grab one every time, literally yeah. just for and, memento purposes. You know, I mean. but and not only as a souvenir, but kind of as a, a physical reminder of the history of the mm-hmm. park. Yes, yeah. be able to yeah, yeah. see the evolution and the changes, and even like maddening when the way that the the dividing line between uh, 
you know, Hollywood and what used to be production central minion has changed yeah. so many times and, and just, you know, little, little quirks like that, you know, that's the kind of park history that, uh, you can't really necessarily find online just by, by Googling. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. It's only by having a stack of, of old park maps yeah. that you can sort through that, that that kind of information is preserved. So. Mm, right. Do we know if there, I don't know whether there was, because it's not something I've thought about until now. Do we know if there, if there's any provision for people with um, like visual disabilities, like people who need large print and stuff like that? Or Braille? Or, yeah. Uh, well, I, not necessarily, because some people aren't completely blind other some people just need a larger print so i'm just wondering if there's going to be anything that, for that cause... you're the man that knows these answers yeah that that's an excellent question I, i'm sure they would just say well uh you can use the zoom function on your smart <laughs> right? device wow. just, uh, no, you know use the accessible and honestly yeah, it doesn't like, work for some people though does it no it, no no but there are um yeah there there are no. a lot of uh like voiceover and accessibility okay. options built into smart devices which Okay. Yeah, where, they, where they talk to yeah. you they uh, read it to you yeah, yeah. Oh, okay you know me i always worry about the the people that, have, that really need these things yeah. okay yeah it's an interesting one isn't it like you say for me i'm not bothered horror night on the other hand if i'm coming for horror oh, night they yeah. better have paper maps okay. wait are we go for horror oh, night that's an excellent no. question you heard it here <laughs> Yeah, Lee is not coming if he does not have that paper map, guys. So. <laughs> That's all right. I'll just come by myself. I you won't al- be going. I can travel alone. You can't even travel around the park on your own without crying. Oh, sorry. What? Japan? Sorry, uh, I'm sucks talking to be about you. hip pain. Hip pain. I remember wheelchairs. No, I wasn't in pain. I was Michelle, just you keep your nose out. I'm she's, not, a, she's a scooter um, girl now. She's a girl now, yeah. yeah. Not, for, <laughs> not, for, not for 70 bucks a night, she isn't. Uh, you better factor it in now. <laughs> Yep, I'm a one percenter now. Seth, have we got any idea when Mel's and Circus McGurgus are opening at this point? Uh, you know, we had that uh, very brief leak of uh, the Circus McGurgus menu, oh. um, and we'll have to wait and see how much of that actually comes true. Uh, but you can take the um, the trolley ride, the Seuss trolley ride through Circus McGurkis again for a long time that one of the tracks was closed off, the one that oh. goes through mm. there. Um, they've been running tra- trains through it again, and uh, it looks like they are prepped in there to do a mobile order style service today, like yes. Menu Cafe. Uh, no more uh, sliding trays along a, uh, you know, buffeteria style service. Um so I I do not I'm I am guessing that uh, they are prepping both of them for the spring break splash slash Mardi Gras season. Um, it, we're uh, you know we're seeing right outside of Mel's right now. There's got uh, construction walls blocking off the front of Esoteric Gate, which yes. is where the Mardi Gras parade comes in through, and we've got a couple days of downtime for the horror makeup show. Um, so it, it all seems to be tied to some repaving project okay. right outside of Mel's. Um, and we're also seeing that the, the shows, uh, that happen outside of Mel's like that driving and dance are, yeah. are ending by the end of this month. So, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that's a sign that, uh, sometime early in February, we might see, uh, Mel's coming back. It was so weird being at Horror Nights and Mel's not being open. Right. It exactly. was. Exactly. Yeah. Um, hopefully that we will see a new Mel's with a much improved uh, kitchen and menu because yeah. uh, I honestly think that at least when it closed, Mel's burgers were probably the worst burgers <laughs> on property. They were. Oh, uh, Mel's. <sighs> they were. It's great. just so bland. It's so. Middle American average <laughs> flavorless. Uh, it's called nostalgic, Seth. Uh, <laughs> nostalgic is the word. <laughs> did people not have taste buds in the 50s? No, is apparently not. I don't think so, no. Yeah, they didn't have cholesterol then either, apparently. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I was talking to Tracy about it earlier with the mobile ordering thing, and I think I would like to see a lot of places at Universal go that way. I know mm. when we did, Michelle, when we went to Minions Cafe, like the fact that they mm. walk you in, they sit you down, you've got all the time in the world to decide what you want instead of being in a line and having to rush and panic. Mm. You get those people that aren't quite sure what they want Me. and they panic when they get to the front. You've got Me. none of that. The food <laughs> comes out. I was saying to Tracy earlier, there is one place, one place above everywhere mm. else that would benefit from mobile ordering only 
anywhere else on property and that is fast food boulevard because we went to fast yeah. food boulevard in september and it oh was a <laughs> show well, it is awful. I'm I'm actually kind of glad that it is not mobile order only, uh, because if it was, then everyone would be using mobile order, and it, those of us who know about mobile order wouldn't be able to just slide in the side True. and pick our stuff up and be out of there in in five. Every time I go in there, I see people waiting for like half an hour, forty five minutes or more yeah, to wild. place an order, and I just you know uh, you know they have improve the mobile order system when they, they brought it back with uh, time slots for places that have a window for pickup. And, you know, I so, same thing at Burger Digs. Burger Digs is always a mess yes. over at Jurassic Park with a line coming out the door. Yeah. And I placed my order f- from outside of uh, Skull Island and walked right up and had my food in like six minutes. Um, so, yeah, uh, I... If they do mobile order right, it's great. Um, but I have had problems at like Thunder Falls Terrace uh, where they do mobile order to the table. And I've just sometimes just randomly sat there and not gotten my food. So weird. There, there's there's still gaps in their communication system, in mm-hmm. their mobile order system. Sometimes like they like when you get to that point of like, OK, I am here. Please make my food. Sometimes that message, whatever reason, does not get passed True. along right yeah i had a terrible terrible mobile yeah. order experience at cafe la bomba in oh December. yeah oh my you gosh know, it was awful la bomba is the one that i hear the most complaint i personally have never had that problem but it is the place that i hear the most issues with the mobile order okay. going awry and that's the only place that i order mobile and always get it on time for some yeah. reason yeah i know oh, shelby I know. Shelby from Universal Orlando Vegans and the Taste of Universal, yep. shameless plug. I know she goes a lot, and she's never yeah. I've never heard her have any issues with the yeah. mobile order in there. Yeah. I don't no, know I, what happened. I've, I've gotten lucky, too, but you aren't the only person that I know has okay. had, uh, had issues like, there. Michelle's here. Screwed up. That's right. it. I know. We need to, I'll, 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 she's, got still, a, she's got a microphone. Screw up her order. Yeah, we need to give you your piece of it to complain I about. Take yeah. a, I'll take the mobile order over standing in a line for a cashier any day. Yeah, yes. I would too. I just sure. think in yep. places like Minions Cafe, like mm-hmm. that type of place, it works really, really well. And I think we'll probably mm-hmm. find Yeah, we're going to see more, more yes, and more. Of that. Without Especially, a doubt. I think I'm pretty much sure that in Epic Universe, at least each of the main lands will have one main dining that operates on that kind of system. Well, we were talking about it, weren't we? Yeah. Toad, Toad's Cafe and Super Nintendo World, guaranteed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, so that's a, yeah, Toadstool, you know, Toadstool in Hollywood is this weird hybrid where you uh, have to kind of get a reservation to get us to get in the door. Yep, that was Tracy Japan. did the same in Japan. Like you're using sort of a mobile order to get in the door, but once you're there, you have to wait for a cashier yep. and then they take it to your table. And I wish that they would eliminate that cashier step at uh, in Hollywood because uh, that they have in Hollywood when they bring it to here because it just does not work well. That yeah. was the same with Tracy in it, Japan. Except it wasn't that quick because I found yeah. out that once I, I got in line at my designated time, I would still be waiting up to two hours to yeah, get so in. Yeah, so you got your virtual oh, yeah, yeah. time, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, which was like half. one fifteen, And then it would have been another hour on top of that two. just to get in. Yeah. And yeah, I had the rest of the park to say, I had, I had a date with Jaws. I was gutted you didn't go in, but I yeah. wouldn't have waited I, that I long you either. You weren't no. allowed in without... There's no way I would was your have. time. I could, you n- couldn't go in to look around. No, but what I'm saying nope. is that I wouldn't... If if that's how if I'd have figured oh. that out, there's no way. You, you one day at Universal mm-hmm. Japan, there's no way you've given it up just to go and eat in there. No, I mean, I yeah, go you're back. Spending, you're basically, even in, in Hollywood, uh, the first time it was over an hour, and even yeah. the last time I did, it was from, from my return time until when I got my food was well over half an hour yeah so that's yeah. crazy it's a lot it's it's a big investment mm-hmm. the food is so cute though it is. Oh, uh, i know that's why i was gutted she didn't go you gutted yeah. <laughs> i was like just think <laughs> of the content I was, like, I was so close <laughs> i'm like i'm not going i don't care all i'm thinking about is the instagram stuff we can put on if i hadn't been flying home the next day i'd have got another day yeah it's a shame and so as as i mentioned the street show in front of mel's uh ending uh, that's also um, happened to the Sing It show that's uh, been for several yeah. years in the New York area. We lost the citizens uh, or the the yeah. inhabitants of uh, Port of Entry. Oh, Paul went out. Pirate. Paul went out for the pirates and the mayor of Port of Entry. I am, I, yeah, I am, oh. I'm, I'm gutted. Yeah, real shout out to the mayor, a uh, friend of mine. Yeah. And I was. I, yeah. I'm hoping that we're going to see a lot of these folks. 
uh, show yes. up in Epic Universe. Uh, but that's there's still a gap. You know, they've got to eat. Yeah. <laughs> People yeah. got to pay their rent. <laughs> Um, they can't just wait around till 2025. Um, I know that they are already, re- you know, auditioning and casting people, and there's going to be rehearsals starting hopefully soon, but soon can't su- happen soon enough for yeah. uh, a lot of these folks getting laid off. I don't um, understand why they do it because, especially part of entry, it adds so much more energy yeah, to that, that entrance to that part. Yeah. And, and yeah. the uh, fact that people are then getting that backstory. Mm-hmm. For, to me, as a storyteller, that is so important. We had, just, we had two amazing oh, interactions with times. the pirates when we were over in September. Amazing. Yeah. They're and, hilarious. And the Sinbad show that they uh, they would tell with all these references to lost uh, universal attractions. There's a lot of inside jokes. Yeah. Um, really, really well done. So, Jim, I mean, talk about the drive-in and dance show. I mean, that only opened... What, August? Yeah, that's that's been around for like six months or so. If that, um, and the Gabby's, um, the 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 cat show, <laughs> the, the Gabby's oh, Lord Treehouse, Dollhouse, uh, Dollhouse. Yeah, Gabby's yeah. Dollhouse. Sorry, Gabby's Dollhouse. That also like two months. Um, I think either has ended or is going to end yeah. very shortly too. But that's probably something with that is going to show up again inside DreamWorks Land. I think that mm-hmm. was kind of just a <gasps> test for DreamWorks Land because Dream they've Works said Land. that that character will be part of that. Now there's a segue. Oh, DreamWorks Land. We don't know anything about it. In true Universal fashion, it opens this year and we know nothing. <laughs> we'll find out the week after, don't worry. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we know what we can see by yes. looking over the construction wall because Shrek's uh, house, uh, you know, that's kind of like a giant tree stump. That You can't miss that right now. No. Uh, it, is, it is poking right up over. And it's super awkward the way it's sitting right in front of the entrance to E.T. Y- uh, yeah. There's I'm no still really there. curious. I'm still really curious. Is ET going to get a repositioned uh, entrance at some point? Because it's it really is just kind of like crammed in the back corner behind behind Shrek right now. I mean, it would make more sense if, if they put some trees or something, but like connecting the two. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's really weird. Uh, I'm not sure how that's all going to pan out once they move the construction walls. But if I was them, I would shift the uh, entrance the crowd flow around for ET uh, yeah. and reroute that, that queue. Cause it's, it's going to be hidden. No one's going to be able to yeah. find it. I, speaking of ET though, I noticed that sometime in the last few weeks, they have added some new uh, lighting. They've got these color changing. Oh, they look yes. like RG, RGB gamers uh, strip, you know, things that you would put in a, a gaming computer. Um, but they like uh, in the scene where E.T. is conducting all the little baby E.T.s yes. that are playing music, um, <laughs> they've added those to some vines and things that the E.T.s were climbing on. Um, I think it mostly just distracts from the fact that all those animatronics used to actually move and now they're like 90 percent just static really um so i guess uh i would have rather them you know do some maintenance but if they're not going to do that then yay rgb lighting <laughs> <laughs> it's like a disco <laughs> yeti animal kingdom at this point yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um so yeah other than shrek and i think we kind of know that and when we can see coaster. the troller coaster yes i hate that name so much <laughs> But yeah, I really, cute. I want to know what's going on where um, Curious George used to be. Yeah, yes. Kung Fu Panda. Uh, I want, I want what's in Universal Beijing, Kung Fu Panda Land of Awesomeness. I want mm. that over there because that land looks amazing. Yeah, or even the uh, indoor Kung Fu Panda Land that they have in uh, Dubai. That's just not a very popular movie over here, is it? The new one's coming out soon, isn't it? Yeah, it it's popular. Yeah. Don't never underestimate Jack Black. Exactly, true. I love Jack Very Black. Very true. Yeah, I just don't remember there being a whole lot of hype Best around it when it came out. Yeah, but we will uh, we will see that uh, coming up. Uh, obviously, we don't still don't have an announced date, um, but uh, summer is my guess. <laughs> so September, hopefully early summer. <laughs> yeah, hopefully early summer, but August 29th. Yeah, you know, <laughs> right before Horror Nights. Yeah. Hey, at least this is in Universal and not Disney. If it was Disney, it would be four more years before. It was. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's weird, is it? Because we're talking about it and it's a land that, that doesn't really appeal to us. I'm quite interested to see it because it's a refresh of a land that the only time we ever went through was at Halloween Horror Nights. But um, 
it's it, it obviously it's another thing because it, it, it does worry me a little bit because I've heard people complain who've never been before and who have gone because of Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade have gone to Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade and walked around the rest of the parks and gone everything else looks tired and old and so mm. obviously they're doing this huge refresh on both parks that's why there's been walls up constantly in both mm-hmm. parks for like the last 18 months. They're obviously trying to freshen everything up so the people that are coming for Epic Universe go to studios and islands and it doesn't, that gap in quality isn't as right. much as it's, uh-huh. as it was. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. They they know that there's a perception that there's, um, you know, the, the Harry Potter stuff and everything else. Yeah, uh, it is. And, uh, you know, they're, with within reason with, within budget uh they're they're going to do what they can to kind of spruce up the rest of the park to come up to that level in the same sort of way that they you know did uh additions and cleanups around the existing parks ahead of the opening of the wizarding worlds that was a long time ago i mean speaking mm-hmm. of epic universe as well the legacy store apparently from what we're seeing has been cleared out already yeah, I think the 7th was the final day. Um uh it's I think by the time we're recording this right now it's it's closed. And uh I uh, missed some of those displays. I would love to know what uh happened to some of the props and and things. I hope they turn up somewhere else. I think they would be great to have a retro corner in the the large um Universal Studios store right That's next good door. Idea. But I am so excited for them to do an Epic Preview Center because yes. mm-hmm. the Preview Center for Islands of Adventure was one of my favorite walkthrough attractions. Uh, what Advertisement or not, uh, one of my favorite walkthrough attractions ever. And uh, I really hope that they live up to that legacy with the Preview Center for Epic. It'd be interesting because, Seth, uh, Chris, did you go through the Islands of Adventure one? I, I did, and I still have my passport. You have your passport. Oh, I still have my passport. passport. So as far as a, 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 a space that it was in, how does the Legacy Store compare? Because in my knowledge of it, I would assume the Legacy Store is a lot smaller than where it was originally, like where the one in Studios was. So the, the, you know, the IOA uh, preview center was basically the exact same place that the Halloween Horror Nights tribute, tribute store, store yeah. is held now. Uh, you know what's what's the extended queue of the Re- Re- Revenge of the Mummy? So that's a big, so a much bigger that's, space. That's a larger space than the Legacy Store, uh, for sure. Um, but I think that you could squeeze a lot in there when you clean out all of the existing fix. If you clean out all the existing fixtures um, and kind of re reposition uh or repartition the space i think you could fit quite a, okay. quite a lot there yeah um this was good at working with small spaces they are so, you're right we've yeah. said that mm-hmm. for many many years yeah it's going to be interesting you know, I, my i have a feeling my gut instinct is that with the amount of space they have it's probably more likely that they'll put like a large model in the center of the room and kind of have an open floor plan with exhibits about the individual uh lands around the perimeter uh as opposed to having a like a walk strict through, walk yeah. through mm-hmm. you know because then you've got the crowd flow issue of like we're we're going to operate this like a, a conga line through a hall, Halloween Horror Nights house yeah <laughs> so yeah people with flashlights keep it moving yeah, exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> um yeah so i don't i don't think it's you know i don't think it's going to be quite as immersive yeah. I, I don't think i doubt we'll have anything quite as cool as the uh in the Jurassic Park room in the preview center with the uh the the raptor behind the cage that would uh, go off and bang on the wall if you got close to it. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll have some fun effects in there. Yeah. Do I we mean, have any, uh, any guesses on when it, when it's going to open? Um, well, you know, it's while. probably the same cl- crew that's going to work on, that works on the tribute stores. Um, so they've got to get uh, their Mardi Gras tribute store together and, um, uh, I would say between the Mardi Gras tribute store and the summer tribute store, <gasps> uh, that's that's, that's when you'll see it. Ooh. That's okay. I mean, I think you know we we we've been hearing a lot of buzz that Universal is going to start releasing uh, information. Um, you know, to start teasing uh, Epic Universe to the general public as soon as later this month. Yeah, I've heard that uh, as well. And so I think that you know uh, with 
Mardi Gras launching in February, um, seeing a tribute store or a, I'm sorry, a, a preview center for Epic opening, you know, sometime within the next month or two is not unreasonable. Isn't it, isn't it crazy how like pre pandemic it was supposed to have opened up last year? Yeah. We're here yep. talking 20, about 2023. Oh God, that's crazy. Um, and wow. Honestly, the, yeah. the, the way the world changed, the fact that it only got pushed back that's uh, true. You know, about two yeah. years is, uh, is probably not too bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was worried yeah. it was going to get scrapped altogether. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And then the, the fact that it didn't get, as far as we can tell, you know, uh, value engineered down to nothing, that mm-hmm. pretty much the plans that, that they had uh, before everything shut down, uh, you know, with, with some changes, uh, like, you know, the monster show turning into a, a coaster that the, the basic, uh, you know, the bulk of the, of the park seems to pretty much stayed intact and not gotten, uh, you know, nothing got axed like beastly kingdom at animal Kingdom. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, obviously we've kind of mentioned it there as well. Horror Nights this year should be an interesting one because I think we've talked about it quite a bit on the show since last year's. Um, Mm -hmm. I didn't enjoy Halloween Horror Nights last year as much as I normally do. It seemed a bit of a mess from my point of view, Mm. more than normal. Mm. I mean, it's always a mess, and I just, I I don't know what it was. Are you talking operationally or artistically? No, artistically, it was great. I think the the front scare zone was a bit weird, obviously, because I understand they didn't want anything down Illumination Avenue, so that was weird. But the rest of it, it it certainly missed that Lagoon show for definite. Yes. Um, Yes. But just operationally, it, it, mm-hmm. uh, Chris, you and I, you very specifically have mentioned it, that, and, and I've actually looked it up to see how true it is. Chris said he didn't know there's ever been a year like Halloween Horror Nights last year that's had two IPs as big, as the, as big and as current as The Last mm-hmm. of Us and The Stranger Things in one year. And I think he's probably right. And that's probably what brought in as much of the crowds as, like, for how crowded it was last year. You'd have to go back to when we had, uh, was there a year we had both Stranger Things and Walking Dead? No. Nope. when people cared about Walking Dead? I don't Dead? think no. so. <laughs> that I think that was Walking Dead died off even yeah. years prior to Stranger Things. Oh, okay. Was, uh, there, was Stranger Things and American Horror Story the same year? Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, I think maybe, yeah. maybe that. Um, yeah, you're you're right. In but terms not of as like a level main, of yeah. mainstream appeal, absolutely. Yeah, you uh, talk like Stranger Things is huge, and then The Last of Us is arguably at the peak at the peak of its popularity now because now you've got people who have played the game and watched the TV show. Whereas if you'd have done it five years ago, it had just been gamers. Now it's everybody. Yeah, yeah it's very true. Yeah, you know they're a victim of their own success, and you know once they went to ten houses. Uh, I think they thought, okay, maybe we can stop there. I think they got to go. They got to crank it up to eleven. Um, you know, we've <laughs> we've got that space inside the Minion Blast building uh, that's uh, supposedly just sitting there, ready for a haunted house. Okay, yay! Um, but we've also heard rumors that, like, maybe some of the sprung tents need to be retired or we've or heard, moved, yeah, we heard like, that and permanent structures put in. Yeah, uh, which would be great. Um, if they can accommodate, if they can still accommodate the same number of houses. Um, I'm hoping that they're not like, oh, we added Minion Blast, so now we can take away one of the others. I think they need everything they can get. I think they could do 11 houses, they could do 12 houses, um, and still keep, like, admission at about the same cap. Uh But that's that's the argument, isn't it? If nothing else, to just take some pressure off of the employees. Yes. Like, the ops employees are getting crushed under these, you know, the weight of trying to push people through this much because yeah. the demand exceeds capacity, and um, and all that stress just gets put on on the frontline employees. It does, mm-hmm. and and, and the, the problem is as well. I think we talked about it again last year. If they added an eleventh and a twelfth house. The bean mm-hmm. counters will want to see, they'll want to see a return in investment for exactly, putting two yeah. extra that's, houses that's, in. That's the problem. They they can't think of the long term of that, like, you have to make this a more pleasant event to attend. Yeah. Because you've got people like me who used to go multiple times every year. And now I go once a yeah. year mm-hmm. because it's not so much. It's not. It's, I can't just relax. No, I can't hang out with my friends. I can't. I don't buy a frequent fear pass anymore because I don't feel like I would get good value out of it. No. I mean, even th- this year, just to go back to like Horror Nights is, 
from reading, you know, Horror Night subreddits and 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 a ton of Facebook groups, I feel like there was a lot of people this year complaining about how congested it felt. And I know it feels like that every year, and I've been going forever now. This but one it was really, worse. This one it really was. did feel like that. Yeah. And, you know, it's. I think it's unfair to have somebody pay a very high admission price yes. to then be forced to wait two hours in every single line, and the yeah. only solution is. We'll get an express pass. And yeah, and that only cuts money. your weight in half. Correct. Right? Yeah, yeah. right. So more than your out. entrance ticket. I, like I, it's th- crazy. Th- this is a hot take. This might be controversial. If mm-hmm. they are going to continue, I and I, I say this is one of the people who bought one of the very first frequent fear passes and had them for many years. If they're going to keep doing frequent fear passes, I think that maybe they should have a reservation system for it, like they are adding for pass those of us who have yes. premier passes in 2025. Yeah. Um, to, you know, manage capacity and not overwhelm, you know, because the people who do buy a single night ticket to Halloween Horror Nights are paying more for fewer hours than they would if they were just buying a day ticket to the park. Mm -hmm. Uh, Didn't they have like a reservation style thing this year? Because I remember for my Russia Fear Pass... I had to put in oh, the, the day first you start. date or the first date. Yes. Yeah. You wasn't you really a reservation. Buy, no. Yeah. You had to buy your ticket. Uh, they kind of spaced out the availability of it so that if you wanted to be able to go from the very first night, you had to buy it early and, and they kind of sold out at a certain point. Uh, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. So they used, they tried to manage capacity a little that way. But once you had it, once you had purchased for the first night, then you were unlimited past that. Right. And um, yeah, I I do think that, you know, maybe a reservation system, like I know it's unpopular with Walt Disney World annual pass holders and they're they're kind of pulling it back a little uh, starting like tomorrow. Um, But maybe, you know, for Halloween Horror Nights, uh, it's they're a victim of their own success. Absolutely. Uh, But, you know, they're kind of like, do they don't want to tip pass that tipping point where people are like, no one goes there anymore because it's too crowded. Yeah. You know, I mean, we uh, talked about we've done an RIP to every time we've been to Halloween Horror Nights and the sure. the upcharge over the past, the, we did t- 2015. Yeah. It mm-hmm. was 1500 bucks for 10 of us. It cost, what, four grand for 10 of us last year? <laughs> yep. And then even yep. higher depending on when yeah. you went. I mean, we've even talked between the four of us and our good friends over the Universal Family podcast about where that tipping point yeah. of when is it like that finite mm, I line. don't know whether and it's getting very <laughs> close to yeah. that point with do us. Do you want a one night of Halloween Horror Nights VIP or do you want a uh, annual pass for the yeah. entire yeah. year? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's ridiculous. It's about but... the same amount. Honestly, yeah. if it's going to continue the way that it did last year as far as crowds go, because I had Express, there was, I think there were two nights I went that I didn't have Express, but mm-hmm. when I have Express and I'm still waiting 45 minutes to get into a house, that's unacceptable Wild. to yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look for at the that. amount of money that I paid. That's unacceptable. So for me, I would rather just go one time with an yeah. RIP. I did two nights this Please. year, uh, one with my annual pass and one with just a one night ticket. And in both cases, basically like, you have to do the early entry or the, you know, the stay and scream. You you have to do that. You have to knock out as much as you can before like 7 p.m. Because um, like once it hits like eight o'clock, you're just done trying to be able to enjoy right. haunted houses <laughs> unless you want to stand in line for for over an hour just for a five minute shuffle. And, and isn't that you're proving the point there. Yeah, I, it's not relaxing. That's no, no, anxiety no, no. driven. Exactly, you know? <laughs> exactly. And so I, you know, I wound up uh, in every, you know, e- each time I go, I wind up. You, you still wind up waiting an hour and a half for your first house because you're standing in line and yes. stay in scream. Yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. and probably in the direct sun. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, bring an umbrella for God's sake, if especially if you're doing the Finnegan's waiting area. Bring an umbrella. Mm-hmm. Um, and We're and then first and night. and then you're just sprinting yeah. through your first five you know, four or five, six houses, as many as you can squeeze in. And then you're just waiting out the crowds to try to do a few more at one in the morning. Yes. But like in between, it's like, you're just, you know, what do I do? 100% it. It 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 almost feels very fast past Disney. Like rope drop, get in as much as you can before 10 a.m. And then after that, you can't do anything until that that rushing. (laughs) That rushing just really does take away from the experience, it though, does. because yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not focused on enjoying your surroundings. Like yeah. the way people describe like what you're saying, or what you're describing is 
it, it, it's almost like just a checklist. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I got five done in an hour. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, did you even you, see them? Yes. Yeah. Like, right. it, or you just ran through them yeah. because you had to go quickly through there to make sure you got to the next house to go quickly to that mm-hmm. one to go to the next one. Look, it's, it's like a military yep. operation, isn't it? And we're not coming yeah, at this. exactly what We're not like. coming at this from a negative point of <laughs> no. view because no. we want no, to no, go no. and enjoy Halloween Horror Nights. I forgot what well, I was going to say. Now want my brain's everybody else gone. to enjoy it as well, which is why um, we get annoyed. Yeah, but then from Universal's point of view, they need to manage those lines because now with all the food booths, if you're stood in the line, you're not buying drinks, you're not buying food, mm-hmm. you're not buying merchandise. Mm-hmm. So it's better for them to to try and manage those lines better because then people are out spending money in the parks. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it is in their best interest to, to try and pull those wait times. Look at that first night we went. 75 minutes it was posted for The Last of Us. Two hours we waited for that bloody thing. Uh-huh. And it wasn't mm-hmm. worth it either. No. No. And, and even to that extent of, of wanting to spend money, I mean... The the uh, one of the surfer boy pizza was one of my favorites, <laughs> but that line was also ridiculous. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, I'd see it, I go, forget it. I'm, I'll just skip it and get something I, else. I, I have never stood in line so long for a can of Chef Boy RD in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at least I got the can. Was fungus in it. Yeah, back yeah. in 2022, it was pizza schools because our yes. oldest wanted a pizza oh, school, yes, and that line school. was an hour every night, and he never yeah. got one. He was devastated. And you know what's really annoying? When I was in Walmart, I saw those moles, oh, and didn't. I. <laughs> didn't pick one up that's my biggest regret <laughs> uh, right. there, there is a, a, a solution though don't one, go once Epic's done let's just open another park that is just year round horror nights I mean that's happening but it's in Las Vegas no, we're, we're going to talk Vegas. about that in a minute yeah I know but we need that, in, we need that here, here, here. Wait, well let's talk about <laughs> it. Talk about yeah. that seems the segue so let's take a quick break because if you want to go out for Horror Nights this year, Michelle's your girl, so Absolutely. go and listen to this yeah, and yeah. get your details, and then we'll be back to talk about moving forward. There's a hell of a lot more going on. Man, we need a vacation. Oh, I got this. <sighs> Whoa, that's awesome. But I was thinking something a little more adventurous. Okay, how about this? Yes! Woo! How about some relaxation for Obama? Oh, perfect. Wait, how did you do that? Easy. Port Key Vacations. For your next vacation, let Port Key Vacations take away all the guesswork and stress of planning. From air and hotel to theme park tickets and everything else in between, they've got you covered. Just visit portkeyvacations.com and touch the port key to get started with your free, no obligation quote request. With just one touch, and Port Key Vacations will magically take you wherever you want to go. Welcome back, everyone. We are here with our good friend Seth. Moving forward, there is so much going on with Universal Orlando right now. Are Universal as a company altogether? Yeah. Universal yeah. across the entire universe. Yes. Uh, both the projects that have been uh, announced and some that are on the back burner, uh, they're, the Universal is really going head-to-head with Disney, uh, not just in Orlando, but across the whole globe. Yep. I mean, the one I want to talk about first off, because it kind mm-hmm. of pertains to us, this yep. breaking news story, and it's more than it was. It's more than a rumor. It's absolutely like, it's come out, and yeah. uh, like letters have been sent out to residents. So it's a thing. Um, Univ- I hope that I hope this isn't the name, by the way. But Universal Great Britain, it's terrible, a terrible, terrible, terrible name. name. <laughs> uh, it, no, no one in in no one there uses says Great Britain. Nobody says yeah. Great Britain. We don't Nobody. think it's great. <laughs> Like uh, it's called then U- Universal England, Universal United Kingdom. No, that's terrible as it just, well. It just needs a leave Universal it, UK leave it, Universal. Leave it, leave it with Tracy. She'll come up with something. Oh, gee, thanks. Yeah, I just, I, I just hope they do a podcast, like an official podcast for it, but have Americans doing it. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know. I mean, to, it needs to be based here in Orlando. That would yeah, be yeah, hilarious. Yeah. That would be funny. I'm like, guys, we're literally here. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Don't hold so, uh, how far is it for you? Um, what about four and a half, five hour drive? Yeah. That's a trip. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, everything's always down south. It's interesting because their train. Yes, probably. Uh, yes, but then you'll have to, it'll still take it's you a long near, time. It's apparently near some studios down there as well. It's like a studio tour, not the mm-hmm. not the studio tour, but there's one. I saw something the other day oh, about I didn't it. See that. The interesting thing that I was thinking about, and I was talking to Tracy about it the other day. 
um, building a theme park, especially on the, the size oh, of yes. a Universal yeah. in England, if you look at every other theme park in this country, they all run a season. So they generally open like May, June and close September, like August, September. It will be interesting to see if this park opens. And obviously we know there's a lot of red tape to get through at this point, whether they'll do a year round park because it mm. will be the first one in this country to do that. Yep. Yeah. Why did they close? Because of weather? Yes. Weather's terrible here. But then so it is in Paris. Yes. And that's why a lot of the rumors have uh, large portions of this park being indoors. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. So dark it'd rides. Be, yeah. So, it'd be, no, yeah. it'd be like, I expect it to be like the entrance of Universal Japan. That whole mm-hmm. entrance is covered mm-hmm. over. Um, Beijing, I think, is, uh, I think Beijing potentially could be the model. A lot of that is like, yeah, du- um, yeah. Yeah. Dubai. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's quite a good model. Um, there, there are plans going back to uh, Universal Russia. Okay. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Run. That was going to be a mostly indoor park. That's a strange so. place to build a theme park, mind. <laughs> In it Russia, was. It was a strange. Too. It was a strange yeah. time. It was. <laughs> yeah, um, early early two thousands. There were all sorts of things. I mean, uh, and some of those plans that disappeared twenty years ago might be coming back. Oh, yeah. uh, I hear whispers that the Universal Korea project that oh, died Tracy. a long I mean, time I mean, ago I mean, I might not be yeah. dead. <laughs> As if she needs an excuse to go back. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it already. Um, again, I, like, just a bonus. If, yeah. if, if this park does get built over here, I was, I've was i been thinking about this quite a lot. I hope it's... I don't want it to bastardize every other universal park around the world. No. I don't want it to be no. a mishmash of everything. I want an excuse to go mm-hmm. there not just because I can ride the things that I'm missing when I can't get to Orlando or wherever. They never, they never translate well I want anyway. They're just never the to same. Be, I want it to be yeah. something standalone. I want to have, I expect it to have a few that are the same, but I want it to be different from everything else. They know absolutely that the UK is one of the most important markets mm. for Orlando. Yes. And they do not want to cannibalize their Orlando market. So I would say you there will be absolute minimal overlap between what they have in yeah. Orlando and what they have there. Um, now, I, I think it would be a smart thing to harvest from like Beijing. Yes. Because uh-huh. ain't, ain't nobody going to Beijing from the UK. Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe. Not, not, off, <laughs> not Maybe. often. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, taking some something from there might be smart. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. um, or, you know, but uh, I think Orlando and the UK are going to be built to be like really complementary that w- without a lot of. But that conflict. makes a lot of sense, actually. Do you know yeah. it would be hilarious if they didn't put Harry Potter in there? Be, that would be that hilarious. Would be... Well, <laughs> you know, I'm not sure yeah. what the licensing because Warner Brothers has uh, specific licensing agreements about Harry Potter to have that studio tour. And is it London or Levinson? Or it's where, where just they... it's least. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just out. It's London. not. It's just outside London. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've so, been. you know, okay. I don't I don't know what the uh, geographical range for having competing attractions is or it's what. Quite but a distance. I, it's not that I certainly don't think you're just going to see another Hogwarts castle, no. another Forbidden Journey uh, plopped there. I, did, I don't think that's going to happen. Is the UK West they, Mississippi? Yeah, if it, yeah, if the the rumors are true, <laughs> Universal might own Warner Brothers by then, so it might be a well, moot point. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, it, HBO or I'm sorry, Warner Brothers, whoever they are this week, or you know, <laughs> yeah. they're going to buy Paramount or Disney's going to buy them or Universal's going to buy them all yeah. or I don't know. It changes every week. I can't keep up. <laughs> but it's interesting as well, isn't it? Because apparently there's trademarks for Horror Unleashed. For the UK mm-hmm. as well, and Halloween Horror Nights. I'd take a Halloween Horror Nights over here. I think it would be horrible. It'd be even worse oh. than Orlando, but uh, worse in terms of uh, crowded. Uh, worse in terms of people. It's bad enough trying to get away from the Brits in Orlando without <laughs> them all being over here as well. Sorry, UK listeners, yes. you're not included. <laughs> but I, sounds like me from South Florida. <laughs> I, I definitely think it would be very successful. Like, oh, uh, without a doubt. I don't. I don't know if they'd have much competition in the the you know, a class, uh, theme park Halloween event there. There isn't any competition, yeah. not theme park wise, yeah. like, uh, Alton towers do yeah. one. It's kind of more family friendly. Mm-hmm. Thought park do one. Theirs is all right. Apparently. 
Because um, Halloween isn't even really a thing over there, right? It's much bigger than <laughs> it's it is. There's a lot of be, yeah. independent haunts over here There's now. A really lot of good ones, actually. a lot of farmers have started turning their farms into like multi event, like multi attraction mm. haunted events now mm. to supplement but do their income. Families like celebrate it, like children yeah. go out and yeah, yeah. There. yeah, we decorate. And... Yeah, yeah. It's not as big oh, as it okay. is in the US, but it's it's definitely a lot bigger than it used to be. You know, we, okay. we we do the thing where we buy the candy and we close the curtains and turn the lights off and watch Netflix and eat the candy. Oh, that sounds yeah. way better than what we do here. <laughs> yeah, that's our tradition. I mean, there's talk- no walking involved on your no, end. No, exactly. <laughs> Just um, the fridge. But I mean, talking of horror unleashed, that's going to be a very interesting thing because I think it's got to be one of those things they're going to have to update it regularly. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Um, yeah the the Vegas market um, they it craves new things and it gets impatient with stuff. Unless you're a Cirque du Soleil, you can't yes. just do the same thing yeah. for year after year in Vegas and, and still, or I guess, unless you're a Cirque du Soleil or Carrot Top, then you can just keep doing the same thing year after year. Because Michelle, you are talking about uh, going out there at some point, aren't you? Didn't you say you were going from out? Orlando? I can say that. Michelle, <laughs> yeah. Didn't you say you were going out to Vegas at some point soon? Yeah. The end of March. It won't be open then a bit. I mean, it's, no, we've seen no, no, pictures no. of the building is like... Yeah, they, it's big prefab uh, concrete walls went up very quickly, but the interior is going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, it's going to be um, interesting to see um, what a standalone Halloween Horror Nights thing looks like. Um, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I think we're going to definitely see multiple walkthrough haunted house style attractions, though I... I believe that they'll probably be built for minimal live actors, um, the kind of thing that they can staff up with lots of live actors when they need to during busier times, and that could run with just a, a kind of a skeleton crew, pun intended, um, <laughs> and use more maybe animatronics or, or effects than live uh, actors when it's a slower time. Um, but but I think they're also going to lean into the theme dining yes. and bars and uh and kind of merchandise you know thing places to just kind of hang out because honestly it only takes you know four or five minutes to go through a haunted house and they want people to stay there for you know multiple hours so we're looking at uh, something similar to the walking dead thing that used to be at halloween uh at universal hollywood then that type of yeah i mean that that was pretty much just a permanent haunted house and they reused that in the most recent halloween horror nights they redressed it as the evil dead okay. um so... i'm picturing it more like the stranger things experience where it was like you did the walkthrough experience uh-huh. thing, and then at the end there was this big giant room mm-hmm. with like different places where you could shop and bars and food places, and you just kind of hung out there for like okay. two hours. Yeah. So if you've been to the current Area 15, uh, this is an extension to that or an expansion of it. Yeah. And the way the current Area 15 works is that uh, you walk into a portal, uh, you walk through a, a themed entry area into kind of a, a lobby. That's a, an open area that's got little shops um, and restaurants and bars around a kind of a central plaza. And then around the perimeter, there are entrances leading to different uh, upcharge experiences. The biggest one is Meow Wolf. Yeah, uh, Mega Mart. And then yeah. you've got d- different virtual reality things or, you know, uh, museum walkthrough exhibits. And so I think it's going to be a similar sort of setup, almost like a hub and spoke kind of thing where you walk into a, an, you know, have your admission that gets you into an open air area that lets you access different bars or restaurants and stuff. And then maybe you have a uh, controlled entry or either a timed ticket or, uh, you know, a, a, a limited entry to get into the walkthrough experiences or, or if there is a, a show that happens on a time schedule or, or some other kind of uh, experience that is, uh, you know, in a, a controlled area a, mm-hmm. away from the main hub. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so almost like a mini theme park, a theme park in a box experience. Um, you know, it's, it's not going to have 10 walkthroughs like, uh, a yes. night at Halloween Horror Nights, but I'd expect to see it at least three or so of them. Yeah, that's one thing that was cool about the Stranger Things experience too. Is in that like hub area that you're speaking of, they also had um, 
actors walking around who were totally in character nice. in time period, like in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And when you talk to them, they had no idea what your cell phone was or anything <laughs> like that. It was very Brilliant. fun. And yep. that was true for all of the stores, all of the restaurants. Like it was very immersive. Mm. And then they also had a bunch of photo ops set up and it was it was very cool. So I hope that's what it's going to be like. That sounds really cool. My my ideal model for it would be the old Star Trek experience that used to be at the Hilton in okay, Las Vegas, where there was uh, the bar from Deep Space Nine, Quarks, where you could just go in and hang out at the bar, and they'd have aliens in costume who would interact with you, almost like the Adventurers Club uh, at Disney. Brilliant. Um, and then there were two, uh, you know, theme park style attractions, each lasting about fifteen minutes, that were hard tickets that branched off from there. Yeah. Um, so you know, a setup like that, I think, I think could could work uh, really well. And I imagine that we're going to see both a mix of maybe we'll have a maze that is like a permanent maze d- devoted to the classic Universal characters, or classic Ooh. Universal monsters. Right. Um, maybe one devoted to uh, like Blumhouse c- characters, because um, I know they're part of Blumhouse, and I think uh, James Wan's Atomic atomic monster okay. I think, yes. merged with that and then uh maybe there'll be a flex space where they can have a maze that updates every couple months to whatever the latest movie releases because that's what i was going to ask we, what sort of yeah. idea do we expect it to be ips or because you've they've got to draw I, people in having this so if they do their original houses people won't know what it is so it's got to be ip based really hasn't it well the, ne- I, the netflix <laughs> experience <laughs> I think that um, the, in terms of the, the marquee attractions, um, they're going to lean into the IPs. You know, they, they announced Blumhouse as a partner. Okay. Um, and they've also, they've also mentioned the classic monsters. Makes sense. Um, but they also have hinted through the concept art that characters like uh, yeah, Jack yeah. the Clown and Chance True. will also be part of it. So I would expect... You know, maybe they're not going to be the headliners because people in in Vegas don't know who they are. But to see those characters have like a themed bar or, you know, be interactive walk around characters that you see before you go into the Blumhouse haunted house or whatever. um, I could definitely see that. That would be cool. It is because it's got to be a satellite, really, hasn't it, to try and drag Mm -hmm. people to Halloween Horror Nights. So they're going to put familiar characters from Horror Nights there to, to kind of bridge the two events basically yeah but it's going to have to be in a way where they stand on their own yes. because they're not going to just be able to rely on orlando super fans who know who they are absolutely uh, to, to becoming yeah and then i suppose epic universe we don't want to talk about you well, there is kids there is a kids cares. resort that's yeah. <laughs> who cares? <laughs> right there's only three there's only one you person live in texas there's only one person on this call that cares about that there's three of us four of us i don't know whether you care about it seth o- from a other than from a a, a journalistic perspective yeah i mean i i think it is definitely going to be uh the least impressive of the projects that universal is it's it's on a deliberately small scale i'm not expecting any you know i'm a, i'm a dark ride person i don't even think it'll probably have any dark rides it'll have a kitty coaster and some flat rides and a lot of meet and greets and uh be a lot of ips that i have no interest in um, <laughs> so you know I, I probably won't be taking a vacation to Texas just to see it myself, but I think that uh, looking at the demographics of that region, it's a really smart place to put something like that uh, because they, they've got a lot of people within driving distance yeah. who would be interested in that. It's an interesting question because, Michelle, how old's Chris? 11? Uh, no, she'll be 13 in April. Oh, my God. Wow. Will she be out? Do you think that park is skewing younger than that? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. She wouldn't be yeah. interested. Other well, than the fact that it's universal. <laughs> yeah. She's... I mean, I think they're going a little older than Peppa Pig, but I'd say 13 <laughs> is is pushing it. Yeah. Okay. So would you go, Michelle, or not? Again, other than I from a journalist. I mean, I could take one for the team if that's what you're <laughs> pointing at. But, no. um, or you... I might go down and visit Sonia and yes. then just take a day. But other <laughs> just to go to that. No. No. Interesting. It's funny. I was just going to say, it's funny. And you, it kind of goes back to the days of um, Disney and Disney Quest. When when Disney Quest first opened at, at uh, I can't even remember what it used to be called now. Normally, uh, the, uh, the, downtown, downtown Disney. Disney oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, no, downtown Disney. And then the, yeah, yeah. the idea was for them to put those around the US. And it's like Universal yeah, they, have looked at that old plan and gone, yeah, that's a good idea that we should do that. 
Well, I mean, we haven't quite gotten to the point of like a, a Chuck E. Cheese no. universal, uh, you know, or, a, you know, it's not a Dave and Buster's quite yet. <laughs> uh, you know, they seem to be kind of selective. Like each of these things that they're building has kind of a very unique, specific demographic, um, you know, uh, that, that they're they're kind of targeting, um, you know, one aspect of their audience and uh, not trying to build resorts that are no. all things to all people but they are targeting markets that disney have never dabbled in yes that's that's very true obviously and it i think it shows where universal are i think if you went back 10 years we were concerned that universal were targeting that magic kingdom audience a little bit when they started um skewing a little younger with the things they were putting in the parks and then they decided mm. that they can't compete with that and they just doubled down and put like velocicoaster and the rest in and i think if you look at um, obviously not the kids resort, but then look at, at Horror Unleashed in Vegas. It's that type of thing that they they still they understand where their market is, and it still skews that much um, sort of older teenager into adult audience. Yeah, I think that they have, uh, in some ways, I mean, not conceded, but you know, acknowledged that you're not going to wrestle little kids away from uh, Disney princesses. Um, but, uh, you know, the the audience that's just a little bit older than that through teenagers and young adults, uh, they've got a pretty yeah. good grip on it right now. And uh, I think that that, um, you know, when you look at, uh, yes, they've got the classic monsters going to Epic Universe, um, but, uh, you know, that kind of skews a little older. But when you look at things like How to Train Your Dragon and especially Super Nintendo World, those are, you know, a little younger skewing, but also have cross-generational appeal. Yes. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Because if you look at some of the videos that have been going out around the How to Train Your Dragon rides, of which mm -hmm. I will not be going on one of them, and the very specific spinny ride that's in the middle of it, I will not touch with a barge pole. Oh, yeah, that that uh, that flat ride uh, with the two arms. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yep. I will not be. Tracy's face is lit up now because. Oh, I'm her. so excited. That's what no. I saw when I was sitting in the no. night. I remember what it was. That's, that's the what one that was doing the rounds on Instagram. Oh, that's with silly the, woman. The no, that, yeah, that um, that, testing. Yep. That'll be me. That looked like a swastika. Do you not remember that one that oh, did the rounds for a yeah. while? Oh, <laughs> Does it just go around in like circles like the Astro Orbiter? No, so it, it them, spins or? around and then, you, an arm as well. and then you spin the yeah, car you lean itself. One way or the other yeah. and it spins. Is this the one that you said is similar to a ride that you guys have over there that you sent me the video? No, no, that was like that was the one I was saying I need to spew it over my mate's back. No, that was a different one. So basically, it's, it's like a flat. It's an arm with vehicles yeah. on the end of it, and that arm moves up, and the whole thing spins round. But, you but then each the spin. individual vehicle sp like yeah. spins round, so like a barrel oh, roll, effectively. Yeah, so like yeah, yeah that's, I think that's what Michelle was saying. No, like well, no, Astro Order, no Astro Order, but that's it, just like a no, so you can go upside down on this one. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. I okay. would be going for maximum spins. And it's kind of a cantilevered uh, design, like the angle no. that the arm is at, the way it comes. You, you can pull some Gs in that thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, oh, I plan to. <laughs> you know, depending on which way you position your yourself, you know, heart, vertically as you're coming around no. the, the turn. Yeah, you can you that can cool. definitely puke on that one. Oh, well, without that, a doubt. The throughput on that's got to be yeah, so low. Yes, yeah, it will be. Yes, it it's going to be like that spaceship yeah. one in... Uh, in my, I, I will say my only fear with, uh, with Epic Universe is just looking at the attractions that, that we know what kind of ride systems they're doing, you're using, and doing a little back-of-the-envelope calculations. There's got... They need some more B-ticket and C-ticket things uh -huh. yes. to soak up crowds um, because they're going to get, you know, these big e-tickets are going to get slammed. And even even the ones that are going to be, you know, be able to push almost 2,000 people an hour, still not going to be enough uh, <laughs> with all of, all of the attention that this new park yeah. is going to get. Well, let's look at Tracy's experience again at Universal Japan. How long has Super Nintendo World been open in Japan uh -huh. now? Two, three years? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and she uh, said Super Mario still overwhelmed. Yeah, a Mario overwhelmed. Kart was 80 minutes at 9 o'clock in the morning. Single, single rider. rider. Yep. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, we've seen this last week uh, Worth it. at wait times oh, sure in Hollywood uh, of, you know, well over 100 minutes, uh, basically from the second that the park opens. Um, yeah. the, only way, the only way you can really do Mario Kart uh, 
without a super long wait in Hollywood is to buy that early entry ticket. That $25 ticket yeah. is worth its weight in gold. So here's a question for everyone on this call. I'm interested. Tracy, I'll ask you first. Okay. In Epic Universe, which land are you most excited for? See, Super Nintendo World, you can rule out because you've got, done that I old s- hat. I know, but I want to go back and actually spend <laughs> time there. What have we got? Monsters, Monsters. How to Train Your Dragon, whatever, whatever Potter's going to be, and Super Nintendo World. Potter's the French... Um, Ministry of Magic. It's not, though, is it? I think well, the facade's going the to be... The outside is French. The inside is British. Yes. Well, that's weird. It's Yes, it's sort of like, a, I don't know, a beef wellington wrapped in croissant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds good, actually. I'm going to try that. Um, actually, I'm going to go with House of Trendy Dragon. Really? Because, yeah, yeah, just pips it. Chris? I would love to be in there. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm probably split between Nintendo oh. and uh, Monsters. Show? I'm split between Potter and Monsters. Seth? Monsters, Monsters, Monsters. See, I'm going to shock everyone now. Not Because I was the not... Fast and Furious Land. I was not the biggest <laughs> fan of these things going into Halloween Horror Nights back in 2019, but I am so excited for Monsters Land. I just yeah, think I thematically, I it's just yes. so different from anything else we've had in a theme park land before as well it's just like you know what super nintendo world looks like you know what pot is going to look like how a train your dragon is going to be like every other sort of kiddie land in a in a universal or a disney park monsters on the other hand is going to be entirely different yeah. from anything else yeah, yeah that's true i i'm a dark ride geek and uh i think that the the ride in the castle is going to really like you know take what forbidden journey and push it to the next level oh, that's true i can't wait that is- I just hope the screens are a lot better than Forbidden Journey because I don't want to puke I, on that. I re- it's oh, not going to have dome screens. It's okay. not going to have the carousel screens. It's not going to be like, sitting in front of a simulator. There will be screens, but I think that they'll be used to uh, like extend the sets. Okay. So like you'd be looking out a window or something. or you know, So you'll have things that are a mix of physical and, and video and not just sitting and staring at a screen. I'm hoping like Haunted Mansion, but actually scary. No, I think it'll yeah. be... Um, um, yep. So if you watch videos of the Jurassic Park adventure in Beijing, that's got screens in it, but it only uses the screens for stuff mm. that it couldn't do physically. And also, yep. funnily enough, the same for the attraction in Dubai. Um, the How to Train Your Dragon ride there is very similar as well. It only uses those mm. screens to sort of, like you said, augment the stuff that they mm-hmm. can't yeah. do physically. See, I've just yeah. realized now why Chris has just bought such a big telly. He's prepping. <laughs> He's going yeah, to be sat. Alex, <laughs> Alexa's going to be sat. Yeah, yeah Alexa's going to be sat behind the chair, like rocking him back and forwards. Yeah, it's it's crazy to think we are like I say we we're into our thirteen year of podcasting about Universal and how much that wow. resort has changed in the last thirteen years. It's unrecognizable and then looking at what it's going to be in another five years time is just crazy yeah Yeah. i think they have the potential to be bigger than disney at this point if they do it sensibly and the way they're doing things at the moment Mm -hmm. they're going a little too heavy-handed for my liking but if the if the if the kind of look at what they're doing and just rain back on raising prices as quickly as they have and nurture those people that have come over from disney because of what happened during covid I think the mm-hmm. potential for Universal to out Disney Disney is there. Oh yeah, I I can just say I I was around in the early two thousands in the dark days after nine uh, eleven when like they sold off all their Lockheed Martin land. They they uh, you know people like Vivendi and Blackstone owned them and were just like squeezing every last penny out. Yeah. And the idea. That like all these years later, they would have you know bought back that property and being you know building this giant new uh, park on it just would never have believed it uh, you know twenty years ago. Yeah, it's weird because we like our first visits were. It's funny now looking back on it because we didn't know at the time, but our first visits in like two thousand and four and two thousand and five, uh, the dark days at Universal, yeah. and that's when we fell in yep. love with the park. So it was only mm-hmm. ever going to get better for us than that. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. All been crazy. for you. <laughs> yeah, um, it's just yeah. 
yeah, it's crazy. But it does worry me. And again, I don't want to get too negative, but it does worry me the cost of everything now once Epic Universe opens when you factor that into the cost of just staying on site and if you want to do all four parks at that point, it is going to become an expensive trip. And that's the only thing that concerns me moving forward. I'll start saving, Lee. I think I'm, well, I'm trying to get my wife to get a job, but she's not having it. I'm, go- I'm still at university. <laughs> I'm a student for life now. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> you can use student loans for going for a trip to Universal, right? No, she used that for career. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. I mean, why well, you just just don't get a second job? I mean, I've been because I've had years. enough. Now I've got a second job. It's this, and I don't get paid for it. <laughs> you guys just need to both go work it. Uh, Universal UK. I mean, that's a good idea. That's a that's bit it. of a commute. <laughs> well, they can hire you to be there. their uh, marketing department. Or yeah. their podcasters. Yeah. Or run their <laughs> Halloween Horn. You can be the that. ride guys. Of, uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would work. Oh. I was going to say something really disparaging about their podcast, but I won't. We like the ride guys. Not the ride guys. I like the ride guys. Yes, we like the ride guys. <clears throat> anyway, um, I think we've pretty much covered everything i don't think there's anything else major that we know we've, about at we've least beaten this horse yeah i mean obviously there's going to be whatever's replacing lost continent at some point um, yeah i'm not holding my breath on that they got all that other stuff to take care of first yeah 10 years is what we heard there's a <laughs> there's a 10-year plan in place and i don't know whether lost continent is part of that 10-year plan probably not but that's another thing though we talk about if people are coming for epic and then walk through Islands of Adventure, like the mm-hmm. the last newest park, and walk through Lost Continent. Be like, what the hell is this land? Is yeah, there anything yeah. to do in here? No. Oh, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. People already walk through there. And yeah. Say, maybe what they the hell maybe is they there? could put like a flea market or a dollar store or something <laughs> inside of Poseidon and some dad. Yeah. Roll up some food trucks or something. Just like that. turn that into a permanent haunted house. It's a massive. Can you imagine the right. walkthrough ha- Horror Nights house that they could put in that? It'd be amazing. I, I experienced it. I did it. They gave us a uh, a hat with a little light on it. Oh, was, yes. Uh, let us look in and uh, had us walk through the, the water tunnel and everything. Nice. It was, uh, it was memorable. It was memorable. <laughs> oh, Maybe cool. they'll do that again someday. Yes, but. we shall see. Seth, it's been awesome having you on as always. Thank you yes. so much for having me back. Yeah, I of course. Really, I, I love contributing the uh, little things, which I hope I will be back for uh, a couple weeks. Two weeks' uh, time, yes. Kayla would I've never been, forgive us. I'm saving, <laughs> saving them up. We we just went through a lot of my little things, so I'm going to clear okay. all those out and start <laughs> collecting them new right now. Yeah. Um, but thank you so, so much You're for welcome. having me on. It's great talking to you. It's so other fun. than us, where else can people hear from you? Absolutely. You can find me and my books at theunofficialguides.com. You can find me personally on all social media platforms at S-K-U-B-E-R-S-K-Y. And you can find The Unofficial Guides at The Unofficial Guides on all social medias. Awesome. Tracy, Chris, Michelle, anything to add before we go? Mm, Don't think so. You look at me like I should have something. No, no, I'm just... Russia Fear should be putting out an episode soon. Yep, get that plug. We try to drop them on the 13th. Yep. Um, but Maddie is out of town on vacation with her fiance on a cruise. So I'm not sure if Very it'll nice. be dropping on the 13th or not. Yeah, we did set up a, uh, a link tree. So oh, we yes, have all we did. The links on yes. there. You can find us at linktree uh, slash UUO podcast. Yes, thank you, Chris. Yes. And of course, don't forget, we've mentioned Taste of Universal. Yes, we've mentioned please, Russia Fear. Don't forget the theme park duo out there as well. Yeah. Um, Thinking as we are talking 2024 and beyond, there may be some other additions. I'm not doing any more podcasts. Not I'm... you. Okay. Oh, Lordy. The, well, there's the potential of another three at this point. Wow. Chris and I have been talking. Yes. Um, I have another one that I'm maybe they don't. This is this are is you... way in the works. Uh, and then somebody else. Anyway, that's all ah, I'm going to say. Okay. But of course, we have, we have a UOP that's positive, not negative. How about that one? <laughs> Can we really briefly, uh, since this is the first of the year, discuss, uh, tell everybody what the Producers Club is? Because I've had a couple of clients who aren't 
producers and when I've talked to them about it, they're like, I don't really know what it is and I don't want to invest all that money. People don't know what it not, is? Uh, yeah, like I don't have all, you know, I don't, I don't want to invest the money if I it's can't participate. dollars for the year. I wish it was yeah, a thousand dollars like, I was like, no, there's nothing really to participate in. Like you're not required. No, no. Right. Just so let's thing talk a little bit do. about what the Producers Club is real fast. Initially, it was set up to help cover our hosting fees. It's become much more than that at this yes. point. Um, so basically, it is a group of like-minded Universal Orlando fans who love the podcast. Um, I suppose the main sort of meeting ground is the um, private Facebook group we have. But we Which do... is leaps and bounds better than the pass holder page. Yes, I can assure you that. Holy moly. It's yeah. so active. Yeah. Um, and positive and happy and kind. And awesome. Yeah. Like That's people. That's where it's on there. <laughs> yeah. False stuff about uh, Back to the Future 4. <laughs> um, we do um, two, at least two giveaways a year. We still haven't done the one that Tracy got. So you can actually, if you still want to get uh-huh. in, the one Tracy got some stuff from Universal Japan when she was over there that we'll be doing. But we usually Soon. do at least two giveaways a year, um, exclusive podcasts throughout the course of the year. Um, chances to be on the show. Like last year when Tracy was away in Korea, we had Producers Club members step mm-hmm. in and cover her place on the show. Um, so well, what you said, what I'm hearing there is we need to go fund me to send me away so people can take my place again. No. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I am kidding. I am kidding. <laughs> um, I'm sending out emails a lot to get involved with topics and stuff for the show. Um, it's basically just that, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Not to sound all like uh, like yeah, mushy, but you'll probably make some new friends in there because there's so many doubt. people yeah. that are friends now because of that. Families, we're making Families. little yeah. like subunits oh, yeah. of family, and that- people from other countries are now friends yes. and meet up in the parks together yeah. and take vacations together yeah. from the producers club. It's just a really nice place. It really is. Like it's so <laughs> weird how. We haven't done anything to nurture it, and everybody in that group is just so like-minded. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. Cult, you're fine. A club. club. <laughs> Not a cult. So, yeah, if you, cult. Wanna, if you want to join, all you've got to do is email us at uuopproducers at gmail.com. And the price depends, because we're sort of halfway through now, so... Um, but you, normally it's only like now. 42 for the year, so it's not a massive it's amount not. of money anyway. Um, and I always... I'm very fair. I know how much people's money means to them so i always try and give as much as i can um but yeah can we yeah. join us cool so there's no time commitment to be a part of the club it's just no, no. there for whenever yes. you want to be it generally yeah. starts at the as end much of like, the beginning, as you want. yeah it usually starts at the beginning of august and runs through till the end of july but come in any time and obviously it's not it's not a PTA and it's not a homeowners association, so you're good. Yes. If you're a fan yeah. of Seth like Kayla is, Seth's in the group as well. <laughs> so you can I'm surprised she's not bombarding you all the time. She's gonna kill me, by the way. She is. <laughs> um, sorry, Kayla. Uh, anyway, sorry, Seth. That is awesome. no Seth loves it, don't you, Seth? <laughs> I, I I'm not complaining. He has his own fan club. Come on now. <laughs> to be fair, we look for the Seth. Club of one, but I'm 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 fine with that. When we were watching our good friend <laughs> Sam Naj's YouTube vlog from September, uh, August last year, we spotted Seth in the background. We did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always lurking somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that is, of course, going to wrap up this first full episode of the podcast for 2024. Don't forget to get your comedy facts in about how bad Fast and Furious Supercharged. We've got about half a dozen. There's some brilliant ones in there. There's one I'm still not sure I want to share, um, but we're not going to start them until two weeks time of course don't forget to get your freeze rare pop recording and rankings in for this year's interactive topic which is at which stick gets your lick and you can send all lick of them stick. to podcast at uuopodcast.com but for now we will say goodbye thanks for joining us and we will see you back here next week for the big fat quiz of the year are you insane get out of here the curse it's real the podcast is over So, the Magi want you to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, X, YouTube, TikTok, and Pinterest. Just search UUO Podcast. For all the podcast news and articles, check out our blog at uuopodcast.com. Contact us by emailing us at podcast at uuopodcast.com. And if you want to join the Producers Club, email us at uuopproducers at gmail.com. Silence! With your subscriptions, we shall rule for all eternity. Listen and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and everywhere else podcasts are found. 
Not even the Magi can save you now. There is no escape. Your end shall be my beginning. Prepare yourself for your next trip by emailing Michelle at portkeyvacations.com. She can take care of all aspects of your next Universal Orlando vacation. We hope you enjoyed your podcast. Please remain seated and keep your arms and legs inside the... (gasps) Prepare to forfeit your souls! Check out the other podcasts on the UUOP Network. Rush of Fear Halloween Horror Nights podcast. The theme park duo for all your West Coast news and info. And the Taste of Universal, Universal Orlando food podcast. So hey, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. I would have enjoyed this podcast a lot more if I had gotten my cup of coffee!